Shiloh by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. Chapter one. The day Shiloh come, we're having us a big Sunday dinner. Dara Lynn's dipping bread in her glass of cold tea the way she likes, and Becky pushes her beans up over the edge of her plate in her rush to get them down. Ma gives us her scolding look. Just once in my life, she says, I'd like to see a bite of food go direct from the dish into somebody's mouth without a detour of any kind. She's looking at me when she says it, though. It isn't that I don't like fried rabbit. Like it fine. I just don't want to bite down on buckshot is all. And I'm checking each piece. I looked that rabbit over good, Marty, and you won't find any buckshot in that thigh, Dad says, buttering his bread. I shot him in the neck. Somehow, I wish he hadn't said that. I pushed the meat from one side of my plate to the other, through the sweet potatoes and back again. Did it die right off? I ask, knowing I can't eat at all unless it had. Soon enough. You shoot its head clean off? Darlin asks. She's like that. Dad chews real slow before he answers. Not quite, he says, and goes on eating, which is when I leave the table. The best thing about Sundays is we eat our big meal at noon. Once you get your belly full, you can walk all over West Virginia before you're hungry again. And the other day, you start out after dinner, you've got to come back when it's dark. I take the .22 rifle Dad had given me in March on my 11th birthday and set, up, set out up the road to see what I can shoot. Like to find me an apple hanging way out on a branch, see if I can bring it down. Line up a few cans on a rail fence and shoot them off. Never shoot at anything moving, though. Never had the slightest wish. We live high up in the hills above Friendly, but hardly anybody knows where that is. Friendly is near Sistersville, which is halfway between Wheeling and Parkersburg. Used to be, my daddy told me, Sistersville was one of the best places you could live in the whole state. You ask me the best place to live, I'd say right where we are, a little four-room house with hills on three sides. Afternoon is my second best time to go up the, in the hills, though. Morning's the best, especially in the summer. Early, early morning. On one morning, I saw three kinds of animals, not counting cats, dogs, frogs, cows, and horses. Saw a groundhog, saw a doe with two fawns, and saw a gray fox with a reddish head. Bet his daddy was a gray fox and his ma was a red one. My favorite place to walk is just across this Radley Bridge where the road curves by the old Shiloh schoolhouse and follows the river. River to one side, trees the other, sometimes a house or two. In this particular afternoon, I'm about halfway up the road along the river when I see something out, out of the corner of my eye. Something moves. I look. And about 15 yards off, there's this short-haired dog, white with brown and black spots, not making any noise, or any kind of noise, just slinking along with his head down, watching me, tail between his legs, like he's hardly got the right to breathe. A beagle, maybe a year or two old. I stop, and the dog stops. Looks like he's been caught doing something awful, when I can tell all he really wants is to follow along beside me. Here, boy, I say, slapping my thigh. Dog goes down on his stomach, groveling about in the grass. I laugh and start over toward him. He's got an old, worn-out collar on, probably older than he is. Bet it belonged to another dog before him. Come on, boy, I say, putting out my hand. The dog gets up and backs off. He don't even whimper like he's lost his bark. Something really hurts inside you when you see a dog cringe like that. You know somebody's been kicking at him, beating on him, maybe. It's okay, boy, I say, coming a little closer, but still he backs off. So I just take my gun and follow the river. Every so often, I look over my shoulder, and there he is, the beagle. I stop, he stops. I can see his ribs, not real bad, but he isn't plumped out or anything. There's a broken branch hanging from a limb out over the water, and I'm wondering if I can bring it down with one shot. I raise my gun, and then I think how the sound might scare the dog off. I decide I don't want to shoot my gun much that day. It's a slow river, 
You walk beside it, you figure it's not even moving. If you stop though, you can see the leaves and things going along. Now and then a fish jumps. Big fish. Face, I think. Bass, I think. The dog's still trailing me, tail tucked in. Funny how we don't make a sound. Finally, I sit on a log, put my gun at my feet, and wait. Back down the road, the dog sits too. Sits right in the middle of it, head on his paws. Here, boy, I say again and pat my knee. He wiggles just a little, but he don't come. Maybe it's a she-dog. Here, girl, I say. Dogs still don't come. I decide to wait the dog out, but after three or four minutes on the log, it gets boring and I start off again. So does the beagle. Don't know where you'd end up if you followed the river all the way. Heard somebody say it curves about, comes back on itself. But if it didn't and I got home after dark, I'd get a good whopping. So I always go as far as the ford, where the river spills across the path, and then I head back. When I turn around and the dog sees me coming, he goes off into the woods. I figure that's the last I'll see of the beagle, and I get halfway down the road again before I look back. There he is. I stop. He stops. I go. He goes. And then, hardly thinking on it, I whistle. It's like pressing a magic button. The beagle comes barreling toward me, legs going lickety-split, long ears flopping, uh, tail sticking up like a flagpole. This time, when I put out my hand, he licks all my fingers and jumps up against my leg, making little yelps in his throat. He, get, he can't get enough of me, like I'd been saying no all along, and now I'd said yes, he, would, he could come. It's a he-dog, like I thought. Hey boy, you're really something now, aren't you? Ain't you? I'm laughing as the beagle makes circles around me. I squat down, and the dog licks my face, my neck. Where'd he learn to come if you whistled, to hang back if you didn't? I'm so busy watching the dog, I don't even notice it started to rain. Don't bother me. Don't bother the dog, neither. I'm looking for the place I first saw him. Does he live here, I wonder? Or the house on up the road? Each place we pass, I figure he'll stop. Somebody come out and whistle, maybe. But nobody comes out, and the dog don't stop. Keeps coming even after we get to the old Shiloh schoolhouse even starts across the bridge, tail going like a, a propeller. He licks my hand every so often to make sure I'm still there, mouth open like he's smiling. He is smiling. Once he follows me across the bridge, though, and on past the gristmill, I start to worry. Looks like he's fixing to follow me all the way to our house. I'm in trouble enough coming home with my clothes wet. My ma's mama died of pneumonia, and we don't ever get the chance to forget about it. And now I got a dog with me, and we were never allowed to have pets. If you can't afford to feed him and take him to the vet when they're sick, you've no right taking him in, Ma says, which is true enough. I don't say a word to the beagle the rest of the way home, hoping he'll turn at some point and go back. The dog keeps coming. I get to the front stoop and say, go home, boy. And then I feel my heart squeeze up the way he stops smiling, sticks his tail between his legs again, and slinks off. He goes as far as the sycamore tree, lies down in the wet grass, head on his paws. Whose dog is that? Ma asks when I come in. I shrug. Just follows me, is all. Where'd it pick up with you? Dad asks. Up in Shiloh, across the bridge, I say. On the road by the river? Bet that's... Judd Travers Beagle, says Dad. He got himself another hunting dog a few weeks back. Judd got him a hunting dog. How come he don't treat him right, I ask. How you know he don't? Way the dog acts. Scared to pee, almost, I say. Ma gives me a look. Don't seem to me he's got any marks on him. Dad says, studying him from our window. Don't have to mark a dog to hurt him, I'm thinking. Just don't pay him any attention and he'll go away, Dad says. And get out of those wet clothes, Ma tells me. You want to follow your grandma Slater to the grave? I change clothes, then sit down and turn on the TV, which only has two channels. On Sunday afternoons, it's preaching and baseball. I watch baseball for an hour. Then I get up and sneak to the window. Ma knows what I'm about. That Shiloh dog still out there? She asks. I nod. He's looking at me. 
He sees me there at the window and his tail starts to thump. I name him Shiloh.